Thank you, Mr. President. I deliver this speech as the United Nations has just adopted the sustainable development goals that will govern the nations of the world in the next decade or so. We all dream of living in a progressive, peaceful, safe, and healthy community. We all hope to be able to fulfill our needs and to enjoy our basic human rights. But we live in a world far from ideal. There is poverty around us, hunger, inequality, injustice, violence, natural hazards, environmental degradation, and climate change. Nations sought to address these challenges through the MDGs or the Millennium Development Goals, which were adopted by 189 member states of the United Nations in year 2000. In its 2014 report on the MDGs, the UN stated that extreme poverty has been reduced to half. 90% of children in developing regions are attending primary school. There have been significant improvements in healthcare, particularly in the fight against malaria and tuberculosis. Child mortality has been cut in half. The political participation of women has continued to increase. The target of having the proportion of people who lack access to improved sources of drinking water has also been achieved. In some of these goals, substantial progress has been made, but greater effort is required to reach the targets particularly on ensuring environmental sustainability, eliminating <coughs> hunger, improving child nutrition, reducing maternal mortality, and bringing down school dropout rates. According to the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, the MDGs have made a profound difference in people's lives, but more needs to be done to accelerate progress. Therefore, on September 27, 2015, UN member states adopted a new set of goals for the next 15 years. These goals, known as Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs, aim to build on the gains of the MDGs to fill in the gaps and address new challenges. Goal 1, end poverty in all its forms everywhere. We know that so well, Mr. President because at least half of our 100 million population still live in impoverished areas. Goal two, end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and to promote sustainable agriculture. This is one aspect, Mr. President, which we should focus on being an agricultural economy. Considering the fact that many of our children drop out within the grade school or elementary years because of lack of nutrition, even because of lack of anything to drink or eat before breakfast or before even going to school. This is a very serious goal that we must meet. Third, to ensure healthy lives and promote the well-being for all of all ages. We have already enacted the laws benefiting our senior citizens. The challenge for us, Mr. President, is to be able to actually implement all the benefits for our senior citizens, not only in terms of medicine and health care, but also in terms of food and nutrition. Goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Just today, in the committee hearings on finance, on the budget of the state universities and colleges. We've seen how the Philippines, as compared to other ASEAN nations, lags way, way below in terms, in terms of GDP per capita ratio of our contribution to educational institutions, especially in the tertiary level. While the Philippines only contributes 9% of our GDP to tertiary education, countries like Vietnam, contributes at least 40% or four times of what the Philippines allocates for education. Goal number five, Mr. President, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. We have done this again through legislation, but what we need to do is to create more parity and equality for women in our country. Goal six, Mr. President, ensure 
the availability and sustainable management of our water resources and sanitation for all. This is a very important goal, Mr. President, especially since because we are an archipelago, especially because we are also victims of El Nino, which is happening right now, till the next couple of months in the first quarter of 2016. It is also very important to focus on sanitation, especially since many of our poor families living in the urban areas lack access to potable water, lack sanitation, lack all these basic amenities which speaks of basic human rights. Even our evacuation centers post Yolanda, even evacuation centers post Zamwanga siege, evacuation centers post uh, al Qadib uh, killings are not fully equipped with water sources and clean sanitation. Goal seven, ensure access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable and modern energy for all. What you're seeing, Matt, Mr. President, is something so simple and sustainable. I wish we could have more lights made up, indigenous, uh, simple materials like what you see on the video. This has been done in provinces like Sarangani, Mr. President. I'm certain that there are other simple technologies which can bring light to our remote barangays and even seniors, Mr. President. It is my dream, Mr. President, that by the end of this year, or perhaps even 2016, that all unelectrified CTOs in the country can finally find sustainable and modern electrification. Eight, to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. This is a challenge for all of us, especially as we see underemployment and unemployment in our midst despite the fact that we have already enacted laws to support employment, like the PESO law, which was recently amended, the Public Employment Service Office, despite the existence of many other laws that can provide self-employment, like the Dugo Negosho, or the MSME law, or the Barangay Kabuhayan law. We are rich in terms of legislation and policy measures, Mr. President. What is lacking is for us to be able to implement all of these laws. So we meet these SDGs. Goal nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and to foster innovation. This is very clear in the infrastructure, and even as we pass and enact the General Appropriations Act for a large part of it belongs to the Public Works Department and other agencies which build infrastructure. We must look at the resilience of all this infrastructure to make sure that the 20 or more natural hazards that come our way in our country will be able, that all of this infrastructure will be able to withstand the strength and the intensity of this infrastructure being built. Go 10. Reduce inequality within and among countries. In the run-up to COP21, this will be discussed on climate injustice, the issues of the rights of indigenous people, and the rights of many of the underprivileged and marginalized sectors in our community and among nations. This is a very important SDG, Mr. President. Goal 11, to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. We know that the issue of peace and order is something that is a concern not only of lawmakers and political leaders, but for every parent, for every child, for every human being living in this country. We've seen how there seems to be a breakdown in peace and order, in law and order, where in broad daylight we see killings which are unresolved and which just simply add into li the list of unresolved statistics in our police blotters. This should not happen in civilized society, Mr. President. Goal 12, to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. And we are supportive of this, Mr. President, to show that consumption and production does not only belong to factories, but even to the rural areas as well. Our arts and crafts should be sustainable and should be sustained. 
Go for D, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Today, Mr. President, I believe the Climate Change Commission will finally submit the intentionally or the national determined commitments of our country. Many countries belonging to the UN have already, even the smallest nations, have already submitted their INDCs to the UNFCC. I believe that the Philippines will soon, within this week, commit to the INDCs, and I hope that this will be taken seriously by the agencies of government, especially the transport and energy and environment and health sectors and agriculture sectors, so that we are able to combat climate change and its impacts. Goal 14, conserve and sustainably use the oceans, the seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Being an archipelago of 30 million hectares, our marine resources is much, much more than the 30 million hectares if you are to combine the exclusive economic zone and the marine protected areas belonging to these um, to these places, Mr. President. And so we know how rich our biodiversity is, not only in terrestrial landscapes, but also in marine protected areas. And what we need to use to do is to use it sustainably so that the next generations will not lose on what on, on, on the gains and on the uh, resources present um, in our generation, Mr. President. And goal 15, to protect, to restore, and to promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, to sustainably manage our forests, to combat desertification, and to halt and reverse land degradation, and to halt biodiversity loss. We are such a wealthy nation with so much wealth, both in our terrestrial landscapes and in our biodiversity and in marine areas. There is no reason why our people should be poor if we sustainably utilize these terrestrial ecosystems. Goal 16, to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, to provide access to justice for all, and to build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Goal 17, to strengthen the means of implementation and to revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. These are very impressive and important targets that, if we are able to achieve them, we would make our commitments close to being ideal. But these goals require not only a lot of hard work, but also collective effort, collective action, and acceptance of every leader and citizen to be part of the change towards sustainable development. The first challenge to us is to adopt these goals in the Philippine context. There should be a national framework on how the SDGs will be incorporated in our development agenda, and these should be translated in our local plans. It is simple, Mr. President. Let us simply align our General Appropriations Act, which we are currently discussing in committee, and eventually will amend and later on adopt in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Let us utilize the Sendai framework on disaster risk reduction, which we adopted in March in Sendai, Japan, so that both the SDGs and the DRR framework in Sendai will be able to make our communities more sustainable and more resilient. There is actually an interrelation among the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, the SDGs, and the expected ambitious and legally binding climate change agreement in Paris this December. In order for development to be sustainable, we must ensure that it is resilient to natural hazards, is geared towards mitigating climate change, because a single typhoon or earthquake can undo years of development if we do not prepare and reduce disaster risks. The SDGs, therefore, should be an issue this coming elections because the next president, vice president, senators, and local leaders of our country should embrace these goals. They should be part of the agenda. In fact, I hope that there will be constant debates of our local and national leaders to be able to make sure that 
our country and our local governments actually strengthen the implementation of these SDGs so that we would be more progressive, more peaceful, more safe, and healthy. Let us prove, Mr. President, that our nation goes beyond lip service, that we remain steadfast in our commitment to building a more resilient and sustainable planet through effective policies and urgent climate action. The path that we will take today will determine the fate of the next generations, starting with our very own children. Let us not fail them, Mr. President, and we should not fail them. I thank you for your time and for your patience, and I would like to encourage everyone present here today to make sure that in the deliberations of our budget this year, that we take into serious consideration the sustainable development goals just adopted by our country and all other nations just recently in the United Nations. Thank you, Mr. President.